Hey there, fellow Formula One enthusiasts. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into the mysterious world of Adrian Newey, the legendary F1 technical genius. And more specifically, we're taking a peek inside his treasured notebook, the holy grail of racing innovation. Join us as we unravel the secrets and discoveries hidden within Adrian Newey's notebook. For those who aren't familiar, Adrian Newey is one of the most celebrated and respected engineers in Formula One history. With a track record of designing championship-winning cars, his expertise has revolutionized the sport. The notebook's importance. Adrian Newey's notebook is not just any notebook, it's a treasure trove of ideas, sketches, and innovative concepts. It has been the foundation for many successful car designs over the years. Its pages hold the keys to unlocking the secrets of F1 performance. Although we can't get our hands on the actual notebook, we've gathered insights from interviews and sources close to Newey. We'll share some fascinating details about what goes on behind the scenes during the creation of these legendary cars. I'd always been a fan of Adrian and his cars going way back to Leighton House times in the, in the late 1980s. And Adrian was, you know, the very best um, that's ever been in, in, in Formula One. It was a question of, uh, you know, how could we entice, how could we attract Adrian to join you know, the Red Bull team? And that's where David Coulthard came into play, who was our driver at the time, and had obviously worked with Adrian for, for many years at both, at both Williams and, uh, and McLaren. The opportunity now is with Red Bull to join a team, but still very much a fledgling team, and to be involved with Christian on, on the, trying to grow that team with the aspiration to, to win races. I mean, kind of winning championships seemed a very distant dream at that point, but to try and win races was something that really intrigued me. I mean, Adrian is the only bloke that can see air. Um, <laughs> you know, he lives in the matrix. He's been the conductor of the technical orchestra for, you know, all these, all these years now. And, um, but he's still very hands-on, you know, he's still at his drawing board. I think it's probably the only drawing board in Formula One. I had to argue with Ron Dennis to wrestle it out of McLaren. Um, obviously highs and lows during, um, you know, all these years, but it's always been fun. It's always been about the racing and we've always had, had great support from, you know, from, from the group and from, from Dietrich, from, you know, from Helmut. And uh, that's enabled us to go about our jobs and just focus on being the best race team that we can be. The, the championships is years of, of 10 to 13, we're all with the Renault V8. Um, we had a great relationship with the engineers at Renault. I think it's fair to say they didn't have the most powerful V8, but it was a product that they tailored to suit our car. Uh, we have some particular requirements, particularly in the way we use the exhaust, and they were bent over backwards to, to maximize what we needed from the engine. We then went into the hybrid era and Renault in the first year, 2014, kind of made a, interpreted the regulations as well as Mercedes. Um, so we were quite a long way behind. And in the first year, you accept that. We all make mistakes. Chassis, engine, new regulations. You can get it right, you can get it wrong. They got it wrong. When the engine at the start of 15 seemed, if anything, actually worse than the 14 engine, that was a pretty disillusioning moment. And we then realised that in your foreseeable future, if you do a spectacular job, you might snatch the odd win here or there, but you're never going to win a championship. So that was a reset, um, which I think we all had to come to terms with, particularly after that period of kind of dominating the second half of 2009 and then the subsequent four championships that this was not going to be our reality for the foreseeable future. Well, you learn that 
um, you know, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. And as Adrian says, you know, during that period, it was, it was tough because we come off the back of four dominant championships and suddenly this barren period and another team has, you know, was just light years ahead of it, of, of everybody. And, and the most important thing was keeping the team together, you know, focusing on the things that we could control, that we could influence. And, uh, you know, bit by bit, we um, were able to snatch wins you know, here and there in every season bar one. Um, and it was always a question of, right, OK, we just got to make sure we get get the right power unit, um, you know, as part of that package. The engine for 19 was a, you know, was a step forward. And uh, we were then able to to really start to get the foundations in place for a, for a championship challenge. It was a very tough year. Um, and when you look at the statistics, it, it looks like we totally, you know, dominated the first half of the season. You know, Ferrari, you know, they had their chances. They had a probably a, a, a quicker package, but you know, Max was outstanding um, throughout the year. But particularly in that first aerodynamics half. and design, Adrian Newey's expertise in aerodynamics is unparalleled. We'll explore the notebook's pages, filled with intricate sketches of wings, diffusers, and other elements that enhance the car's performance and grip. Beyond aerodynamics, Newey's notebook delves into the nuances of car handling and suspension systems. These details play a crucial role in maintaining balance and control during high-speed maneuvers. Newey's notebook is also a breeding ground for groundbreaking innovations that push the boundaries of F1 technology. From unique braking systems to innovative energy recovery methods, it's all in there. Adrian Newey's work has not only shaped the sport of Formula One but has also inspired a new generation of engineers and designers. We'll delve into how his work continues to influence the future of motorsport. The change of regulation for 2017 is, as an engineer, is a more exciting aspect of the car. You know, compared to 2016 car, when it's more an evolution of the car, here you have to change everything on the car, review all the procedure you are doing, and try to optimize the car performance on something you don't know. And it's very, very exciting as an engineer. Probably the biggest set of regulation changes we've had since 2009. Um, very interesting. It's less of a change than 2009, certainly from an aerodynamic perspective, in as much as the flow structures are, are similar, um, but very different in the detail. This one, it opens up more opportunity. We sought some level of chassis differentiation and uh, these rules may provide the framework for us to uh, pursue some chassis differentiation if it's to our benefit. There are many new challenges both for the aerodynamicists and for the structural engineers. It's been a long time since there's been anything quite as uh, different coming out of F1 so we're looking forward to it. As we wrap up it's clear that Adrian Newey's notebook remains an enigma, a sacred source of knowledge that continues to contribute to the success of his team and the sport as a whole. While we may never fully comprehend the depths of what's inside Adrian Newey's notebook, its impact on the world of Formula One is undeniable. It's a testament to the power of human ingenuity and the pursuit of excellence in motorsport. Thanks for joining us on this fascinating journey into the mind of an F1 genius. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with all our F1 content. That's all for today. Stay passionate about Formula One, and until next time, happy racing.